Welcome to this presentation on novel visualizations with Python and P5. I'm assuming that most of you have some familiarity with a Python data visualization library, perhaps matplotlib, seaborn, Boca, ggplot2, plotly, or something else. The great thing about these libraries is that with a little bit of code and some data, you're quickly and easily able to generate a whole array of different plots. These plots could include splums, line plots, splummy line plots, candlestick charts, scatter plots, and many more. Moreover, like these examples from Plotly, you can make these visualizations interactive so that users can explore the data. But sometimes you want to create truly unique visualizations that don't fit those plots. Take, for example, Frederick Broderick's Cinemetrics from about 10 years ago. This uses DVD data to create visual fingerprints for movies. Each segment is about 10 shots in length, and you can see the color breakdown for each of those segments. The amount of movement indicates how much action there is in that segment. In addition, you can compare films, like in this case, 2001 with Aliens. Moving to a more recent example, popular YouTube channel 3Blue1Brown created these simulations for simulating how the COVID virus might spread in different conditions. Both of these projects use Python to generate the graphics. But before moving on to the Python part of my talk, I need to start with something called processing. Processing is a graphical library and integrated development environment built for electronic arts, new media art, and visual design communities. However, it's become popular with many other types of users now. More recently, the original Java version of Processing was converted to a JavaScript version that runs in the web browser. But there are several other versions, as well as other programs inspired by Processing. Generative Gestaltung is a great website to look at examples made in the JavaScript version of Processing. Here, the user moves the mouse left and right to separate out the characters from the words so that you can count the frequency. Here is the same example, except with lines connecting the letters. In this variant, the words are separated into parts of speech rather than to letters. Processing has two key functions, a setup function that runs once at the start and a draw function that does something every single frame thereafter. This draw function runs at roughly 60 frames per second. There are many other functions that you can then add within there for drawing, changing colors, handing mouse and keyboard input, and more. P5 for Python is a complete rewrite of processing in Python. You install it like you would any other Python package, and then you can do everything that processing does in Python. To begin, you would import the library, then add your setup function. In this case, I've included a size function for a 400 by 400 pixel display window. My draw function includes a rectangle at the top left hand corner. Finally, I add a run function. You're now ready to run the program. Note the small rectangle at the top left corner of the output. In this instance, I've swapped the width argument to the rectangle for the X coordinate of the mouse. On the left hand side is a chart of different types of coffee generated from a JSON file. To the right is an amoeba simulation that interacts with my mouse. Thanks for listening. You can find out more at these URLs.